This episode of the Lead Machine Growth Show is brought to you by Lead Machine, the step-by-step tech easy system for getting leads online. Are you ready to start attracting your ideal audience right away? Join the five-day Lead Magnet Magic Challenge today at www.getleadmachine.com forward slash magic. Say goodbye forever to struggling with lead magnets and say hello to getting your offer seen by your ideal clients. Welcome to the Lead Machine Growth Show, where you will discover how to tackle your tech, master your message, and design your dream. Paul Guyen, the mastermind behind the Lead Machine, introduces you to trailblazers who inspire you to implement life-changing solutions and systems you can model to nurture your leads and get your offers seen by your ideal clients who will invest in themselves and you. Be sure you visit our website at www.leadmachinegrowthshow.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now, tune in and get ready to transform your vision into reality. Good day and welcome. In this episode, we'll show you how to make amazing videos without breaking the bank. Whether you're a beginner or have a small budget, we've got you covered. Tune in now and discover valuable tips for creating professional videos on any budget. And welcome to the Lead Machine Growth Show, where passion meets entrepreneurship and dreams become reality. I'm Paul Guyon, your Lead Machine coach, host, and international best-selling author and tech and marketing expert, and I'm dedicated to helping entrepreneurs like you, coaches and solo entrepreneurs, tackle their tech, master their message, and design their dream. Are you ready to unleash your full potential and achieve extraordinary results? Then you're in the right place. We'll dive deep into the strategies, insights, and stories of trailblazers like our guest who have overcome the obstacles of technology, marketing, and mindset and are making a huge impact on their audience. So buckle up, get ready for an exhilarating ride with inspiration, motivation, and practical advice, whether you're just starting out or looking to take your business to the next level. Let's get this conversation started and turn your dreams into reality. So our guest is is, uh, a TechSmith alum, and I just want to tell you a little bit about TechSmith uh, in my personal experience. I've been a user since 2005, I think it was, and uh, I've learned so much about creating educational and marketing videos. I started out with Snagit a long time ago, and I was just documenting business processes so I could better train employees on how to use our software and things like that. And then recently, I, I've gotten into um, doing more more videos and podcasting. So um, Camtasia and Audiate, Audi, I tell you, the combination of Camtasia and Audiate is just saved me so much time. I just can't believe, I, I just, I'm, I'm looking so forward to seeing what else uh, Audiate is going to be able to do for us uh, in the future. So uh, I think there's there some of the best tools out there, uh, especially for marketers and educators. And that's why I'm excited to bring Matt onto the show today. So Matthew Pierce is the growth and content marketing manager and learning and video ambassador for TechSmith Corporation. He's also from Michigan, which is where I grew up. He has created videos for learning and marketing for over a decade. He leads the TechSmith Academy, a free platform teaching video and image creation for businesses. He also hosts the Visual Lounge podcast, which explores using images and videos in the workplace. He's a regular speaker at multiple learning and development focused conferences, and you can connect with him on LinkedIn. Matt, Matthew Pierce, Matt, welcome to the show. I'm so honored to have you here. Well, Paul, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I'm, I'm excited to talk with you today. Yeah, me too. Uh, so let's just dive right in. Uh, we talked a little bit before the show about our audience, and uh, a lot of them are newcomers, and they struggle with a number of things. So what what are the main struggle with video for newcomers? Well, I mean, I think video for a lot of people is just intimidating, right? It, it's a different yeah. way of thinking. Uh, none of us were raised to create video. I mean, there's probably somebody that has had that experience, but most of us, you know, you're taught the basics to read, to write, to do math. And nowhere in the curriculum has there been like video. So a lot of us who are in a position where maybe we're starting a business or we're trying to grow our business and we think about video, it just feels overwhelming because the paradigm of how you edit is it's a different beast, right? It's it's linear, 
uh, or nonlinear. So you got all this different space that deals with time, but then you've got like tracks and levels and it's just moving things. And it's like, there's audio, there's so much to it that it's just like, your heart can probably beat a little faster. And you're like, oh my gosh, well, how am I going to do all this? Um, and so I think there's this intimidation factor. And I think that's uh, uh, yeah. just the biggest barrier. It used to be, I would say, oh, intimidation plus that you need all this stuff. Well, the needing all that stuff is almost, it's not gone. You still need some things, but the the kind of the barrier to entry in the what you need to start is so low. You can have a cell phone and you can make, you can make, amazing quality video if all you have is a cell phone now does it take some practice does it take some learning some things sure of course like everything else um you and in some cases you don't even need a cell phone because now the company i work for makes tools that allow you to record your screen so that could be a powerpoint presentation could be like a how-to walkthrough you could do, record anything and then you don't need the cell phone you can show that as the content that's going on so the barrier to entry on the tech side is lower but there's still the intimidation factor, which, uh, you know, is understandable because anything new can be challenging. Yeah. And, you know, uh, and you can, with recording your screen, you can also use your webcam to be, to be a picture in the screen. So you can be there. Yeah. Um, one of the people that I work with is super technical. She's a fabulous uh, designer, illustrator. And, uh, but when she makes her videos, she does not speak. Mm. She does not. She does not like to hear her voice. So, what, what do you think about that? <laughs> Are there ways you can help with that? Yeah, you know, I'm not surprised. This is very common a lot among a lot of people, right? I I have the privilege of speaking at a variety of events, and for many years, I've asked how many people like the sound of their voice, and typically, the response I get is like. Um, if I ask them if they like their voice, like one or two people will say, I like my voice, you know, and everyone else is like, um, you get that weird shuffle, their eyes look down, they don't want to make eye contact because they do not want to hear themselves. So it's completely natural, but it helps to understand a little bit of what's happening. I think when I'm speaking as I am right now, there's this thing that's it's going on that, that my diaphragm, you know, is obviously it's expanding, contracting and going up. The sounds coming up through my vocal cords, coming up through my jaw in, in through my kind of my side of my head and my chest and my head are all acting as kind of a filter before mm -hmm. that sound ever gets to my eardrums. And so as that happens, it, it does some things to the voice. Now, I, I think for me, it particularly it lowers my voice a little bit. So it just sounds different. But when mm. I hear myself back on a recording, that's the way I sound to everybody else. So, so there, that might not be comforting to some people. They're like, oh no, that's <laughs> how I really sound. Yes, that's yeah. how you really sound. But I think there's something about that to say, hey, this is your voice. Your voice is a good voice. It has competency. It has knowledge. It has power. You, you know, there's obviously things that you can do to learn to be a better speaker to enunciate or speak more clearly their speech you know like you could go to their speech pathology things but i don't think we need a lot most of us don't need that there are definitely people who have you know benefited i had a a, a son who went through a little bit of that to help him out but mm -hmm. for most of us it's just a matter of saying this is who i am i'm going to i'm going to embrace it i don't have to love you don't have to love it but embrace that's who you are and then make it work for who, what you want to say and what you want it to do. Now, it takes practice at that. You know, the more I listen to my voice, and I've been doing this for a long time, I've gotten used to it. It doesn't bother me anymore. Do I, do I love my voice? No, I don't love my voice, but I'm used to it and I'm okay with it. And what I've learned to do is find out how do I embrace it in a way that allows me to get the power out of my message, right? How, how can I go up and down with my voice? How can I lean into my microphone to make it more intimate. You know, what are the there's tricks there that you can learn? And so I think for anyone who's really like, oh, uh, can't do this, I'd say lean into it. You are lovely. You are wonderful. You have a, a, a perfectly good voice. Um, and Paul, I don't know about you. I've listened to a lot of people speak and I, I can't think of anyone really that I've ever met that I said, uh, I can't listen to them anymore. Um, unless they're, it's my kids doing something really obnoxious, maybe <laughs> that it's only short term. <laughs> well, you know what, what I told her, I said, are, are you good with people? She went, oh yeah, I'm really good with people. I said, well, there you go. You can, you, you, you know, assume that your friend is across the screen from you there and you can just tell them, tell your coworker how, how this process is done. That's all you need to do. 
And I don't know if she, she hasn't done a lot of videos. I think the more she does, the, the, the better she would do. You know, uh, one of my friends, John DeLemme, um, when he was uh, in, he's a New Yorker. And when he was a child, he was a stutterer. And uh, he was diagnosed. Uh, he he was told he would never speak. He would never amount to anything. Well, today he's a world class speaker, and he's 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 a, a performance coach, business performance coach, and from stutterer to world class speaker. So he overcame it, and he used different kinds of words and to to train himself to. Uh, and he still stutters a little bit, but yeah, he's on camera. He does videos all the time. So folks out there listening. Uh, Learn to love your voice and just get your message out there. The message is the most important thing. People, as long as you have good audio, which, we, you know, you've got to have good audio for your, for your videos so people can understand your message. It, people will tolerate yeah, not so great video, but they won't tolerate bad audio. And I know I'm an auditory learner. So uh, if I, even even if I'm speaker on speakerphone with someone on my cell phone, I go, oh my gosh. I can't hear you. I'll just, I'll hang up sometimes, but it's you know, so to, bad. To your point about the audio, uh, Paul, I think it's really important that, that, that you clarify that because good audio and what, and that doesn't mean good voice. That means clarity, right? That means yeah. good sound um, is really important. In fact, in, in a study, and I know we'll talk, you'll have this at the end, we, but we have a study that we did. And one of the things that we looked at in our study uh, was why do people stop watching videos? Because, you know, right. if you're going to know how to make a good video, you also need to know what the counter is like, what's causing people to quit so you can avoid those things. And the number one reason, and this is a study we've done in 2013, 2016, 2018, and again in uh, 2021. So we've seen this pattern continue. It The number one reason people stop watching a video is bad audio. Hands down, people are going to quit. They they will suffer a little bit of shaky video, a little bit of blurry video. There's all the reasons they'll keep watching, but if the video is really audio quality is low, you're going to lose them. Yeah, yeah. So let's move on. Um, thank you for that. What about marketing versus educational? I mean, we're as entrepreneurs, we're we're trying to sell our services. And we, we, we want to uh, be uh, trusted and we want to be liked. And we, we obviously we want to convert listeners and watchers into our paying customers some, somewhere along that, that way. So what's the difference between marketing and educational videos? Well, I mean, it depends on who you ask because so my by <laughs> background, I'm an instructional designer. So my I have a master's degree in, in, in instructional systems technology. So I l went to school to learn how to make instruction and training yeah. content and learning content. But for mm -hmm. the last, I don't know how many years I've been a marketer. So I'm kind of this duality, right? Um, and I've always had the philosophy that good learning content is good marketing because mm -hmm. Oftentimes, and particularly, so I work in a, in a soft, it's a software company, right? And so oftentimes when people are evaluating software, they want it, they're looking at it and they're saying, well, I want to know what it really can do. Um, and I think right. tutorials, educational content can be good marketing in that sense. We often saw people come through to our learning content and then go on to purchase. Um, now, that doesn't mean that all educational content is equal and it always just should supplant all your marketing content because sometimes good marketing content is needed. You want to get like a hype video. You want to get something that's, um, you know, more short, quick demo. That's not telling you really how to do it, but it's showing you the outcomes. Um, right. And so I think you, you find this balance, right? I think as, uh, you know, solopreneurs, individuals who are trying to grow their business, you want to find the balance of between that. If we Let's take, let's take um, something like YouTube, for example, and where mm -hmm. this comes into play. The second largest category of videos on YouTube is how to. Right. And so it, you think about that and the number of videos that are being uploaded to YouTube on a regular basis, the just the amount of content there. And the people are saying, we think <laughs> how to is the, the second largest category. And I think it's because if you're on uh, putting stuff on YouTube, people are coming out there, they're getting answers. And if I get an answer from you, Paul, and I'm like, oh, oh, Paul taught me this great thing about how to do this in marketing or that, you know, to, to grow my business. I start to develop a relationship. And right. that relationship is powerful because then when I need something, 
And you come along and say, hey, this is a service. I just want to mention, you know, in my video, I offer these services. If you ever need anything, reach out to me, right? That relationship right. becomes really a, a strong bond that allows the people that tr have trust that you're the person that they want to work with, or you have the product that I want to buy. And so I think you, you, you know, you got to be careful. It's a fine line. You can't, you, you know, you want good, helpful content. It, it needs to be genuinely helpful. It can't just be a, a pitch in disguise. Uh, but I, then I think you also need then to insert uh, the appropriate times, the right marketing messages. Right. And I, and I think, yeah. you know, there, there's, there's a fine lines between all the things that you can do. I think you need both. Um, uh, I think we lean pretty heavy into doing a lot of helpful content for our customers uh, it's, it works for us. Um, but at the same time, we also do have marketing materials. You know, we have things on our website that explain the the features and the values of the products. It talks about, you know, to a specific persona or individual or type of individual, why those products are going to be useful. And so it's, it's just finding the right, the right marketing mix and the kind of right content mix of what you need. Right. And your, and your educational videos is what, what tipped the scale for me to to go and and buy into the audio because i had a, a five-week course i was i was doing and um i was doing it on the fly so i I'd, I'd record a week's worth of content five hours or an hour really basically an hour's worth of video and uh, I, I was writing it as we as we went and uh had i had to had i had to edit that with a wave editor oh my gosh yeah, I, I would I wouldn't have been able to deliver, and so and and I learned that through you know TechSmith Academy. So uh, it was very helpful. And not only did I just you know, okay, there was a bit of hype there, and I said, yeah, uh, you can edit video just like you edit a Word document. I mean, that's mm -hmm. what got me because I I I I write a lot, and I said I can edit a Word document. So uh, so that's that really sold me. So absolutely. And and the no like and trust factor is is already there because I've been a longtime customer. But you know, I bought I bought more and more products from you guys be because of the the good you know high quality products, but also because of the content that you're that you're creating. So we talked a little bit about some of the gear. So uh, what time should be, be? What kind of gear should we have to uh, to really to do it right, to 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 get uh, some someone on a budget. There's there's a minimal level. I know you can do it with your phone, but you know what are some of the things that you would suggest a, a, a newcomer would or someone getting started? Uh, what would they invest in? Yeah, so I have a, a very specific philosophy about about the order you should go and purchase gear, um, and you don't need to do it all at once. But I always recommend that the first thing you, if you're gonna, if you have a budget and you're not just relying on your cell phone, um, mm -hmm. and you want to add, maybe it's to add to the cell phone, maybe it's separate. The first thing anyone should buy to make better video or to get in there's getting started making video is a microphone. And it does not have to be an expensive microphone. It can be one that is $60. If you buy one that's $30, your quality might vary, but that's going to be better than your built-in microphone, typically in a laptop, for instance, or even right. built into your phone. Although, you know, I, I do know people that will hold their phone kind of like a, a reporter kind of microphone style. Um, mm -hmm. So first invest in a microphone because that's, again, number one reason people stop watching video bad audio. So yeah. spend some time there. If you're going to do a lot at your desk, there's a lot of great affordable options. I know a lot of people really enjoy like the blue Yeti. Um, you know, I've got a, a little shotgun mic. Some people like they're going to be moving around. So they want a lapel mic and you can get wired ones or wireless ones. It doesn't, you know, just read the reviews, go out to Amazon, look at the things that, you know, that you, if it looks like you like, Oh, that looks pretty good. Read the reviews, what people have to say. Um, and then, you know, test it. If you can test it out. And if you like the way it sounds and it sounds good with your voice, there you go. Now, yeah. the second thing might be a little counterintuitive. Because what I go to next is not a camera. Most people think, oh, I'm going to have a microphone. Now I'm going to get a camera. Second <laughs> thing I actually in, I suggest people invest in is if they're going to do camera video, if you're doing screen video, you don't need this as much, although webcam it's helpful for webcam, but it's invest in some lighting. And again, you don't oh. have to spend a lot of money on lighting, but lighting is really important because 
whatever camera you have, whether a cell phone, it's a webcam, or you've got like a DSLR camera, cameras love light. And so you need good lighting. And especially with cell phones, the sensors, what the, picks up the light is pretty small. And so you don't need a lot of lights, but two lights. You can, I have like a recommendation for two LED panels. I'm actually using them. I've got them. I put them on my ceiling because I'm fancy like that. But, uh, <laughs> you know, for about $250, which is, you know, not nothing, but they're LED panels. I have a remote control that I can adjust the color temperature. Mm. I can adjust how bright they are. I can even change the colors. You can see I've got, actually, I've got another set. Then I've got the light behind me. But that light makes all the, a ton of difference in just the overall quality. Because if you've ever seen a camera, like the video and it's kind of grainy or pixelated from like it's too yeah. dark, you'll get that mm-hmm. pretty easily. And it just looks fuzzy and it doesn't look as good. So microphone, then lights. And then if you still have budget, you can start investing in a camera. Again, I'm a fan of cell phones because they're just kind of drop dead simple. Uh, although you should learn the settings of a, of a cell phone, uh, you know, don't just assume that it's like, oh, what, whatever's default, right? Like actually go in there and look at it, make sure you've played with the settings to get it the way you look. Uh, but they're just so good nowadays. It's hard to beat for the price if you already have it in your pocket. However, you, you can always go and invest in, in a variety of different cameras, but the same thing applies. You have to learn how to use it. And if you've not worked with video cameras, in particular, like uh, DSLRs or mirrorless cameras, there's a lot of settings. Like, but the good news is you can go to YouTube and do what I did uh-huh. and Google my ca- Google the camera for the application of things that I'm going to want to use, learn about like, you know, shutter speed and ISO and, and all these other terms, right? There's It's a whole vocabulary. Most of us don't yeah. care. We don't want to learn the vocabulary. That's why this is the la- also the last thing. It's expensive and it takes a lot to, to get really good at it. Um, but, uh, you, you know, if you, if this, if you, that's what you want, take the time to learn it and, and go, go dive into it. But, you know, you can learn a lot from just watching other people. There are a few other things in there that come along with this kind of setup. You know, if you got a camera, get a tripod, get something to make it sit stable. Um, yeah. You know, for video editing, you may want some headphones because when you edit audio, it sounds different in your speakers than it does in your headphones. Like you, uh, Paul, I see you've got the over the ear headphones. Those are really great, right? For hearing yeah. things. But if your audience isn't going to watch in those headphones, it, you, you got to listen in both places. Like, okay, how's it sound here? Okay. You get through your edit, take it off, listen to it then through your speakers or listen to it through some cheap, uh, like, Earpod, ear pods or AirPods or whatever, right? So yeah, yeah. So there are other things along the way that are helpful, um, but again, with that all said, if you just use your computer and a, your built-in mic, and you can get to get to make the first video, make your first crappy video, get it out of the way, and that's a great great place to start too. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Yeah, I use the uh, the headphones for my podcast so that's for you know to eliminate the echo and so i can hear real well mm-hmm. and and also cancel the noise between the the dogs barking and the, the cats fighting behind me and and all that that's going on but when i edit the when i edit the the videos i usually do it um with my speakers uh, on on my desk and uh, but i do i listen to them but you're right people aren't going to listen to them back that way some people do though and you're going to be you're going to be in a pair of earbuds people at the gym listening to your podcast or, or whatever. Uh, but this this is not for just podcasting. This is for all kinds of different videos that we make, which uh, it leads me to, uh, we were talking about content and um, I wanted to kind of roll back. We were talking about marketing and educational. What kinds of additional, you said hype. Um, so what kind of content would you suggest that we start out with uh, a quick demo uh, showing outcomes, how to you mentioned, uh, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, there, the the amount of types of videos, it's really limited to your imagination. We put names on some of them, but think about what in your business is going to benefit from being able to show people what's either the product or if you got a service that can show maybe the outcomes. And that could be as simple as maybe you gather some testimonial videos. You've got some clients that you've done some work for. They're very happy with the work. Maybe ask them if you can like ask them a couple questions and record that and cut that into 
you know, videos that you can use across social media, or you can use it on your website. You can use it in a variety of places. So that's one. Um, anytime you've got instructions, I think that's, again, we talked mm. about the how to, I think thinking about like, okay. And it might even be something like you're going to meet with someone and let's say we're, uh, we're going to do a consulting business, Paul, you and I are, are going to have a business, but we have a certain kind of intake process that people are coming and there's things we want them to know. You could make a right. video that walks them through some of those steps, right? Like, okay, during your first visit with us, here's three things that we're going to ask you. Here's what we want you, you know, like here's what you need to bring. Let's make you feel prepared. So it really right. depends on your business and the model. Um, there, there's a million things that you can do though. Uh, you know, things that you just think about, like, what is it that I want people to see and that I can couple that with the sound of either description or maybe it's music because you want to be get people excited or whatever. Yeah. Get some emotions going. Um, you know, I'm trying to think of all the things that we've done in the past. I mean, we've done things like we've used, we've told stories, right? And it's like, hey, let's let's show you, walk you through this example of like what the world could be like. Um, you mm -hmm. know, a lot of product demos. We often will do interviews, you know, for our business. Mm. Just as you're, you and I are talking, you know, that's the reason I do a podcast. We want to talk to experts who are not in our company so people can benefit from them. So right. um, there really is an endless amount. The other thing I'll say is that if you're working with partners, and now this might not be the marketing side of things as much, but if you're working with a partner, um, maybe you're asking them to do work. Let's say you're hiring someone, you know, like on a, a a giga site, you know, like Fiverr or something like that. Yeah. And you want to give them instructions and you want them to be like, you want it to be really clear. I, Paul, you said you're a writer. I'm a, I'm a decent writer, but sometimes it's just easier for me to show it and say it at the same time. And so I'll just, yeah. I'll just fire up like snag it or screen recorder and I'll just record whatever it is I'm trying to get across to them. And I might give some emotional details like, Oh yeah, I'm really, you know, I really want this so they can hear that excitement. Um, we do this in our team with feedback too. Someone will say, uh -huh. put something out. Like I just actually watched a video today. I got a, you know, we have a, a vendor we're working with on a project and someone was reviewing that and gave like a bunch of feedback for us to be able to pass on to that vendor. And, you know, and I could hear like the things that were really important because we have these tells like, uh, yeah, you know, it's really important. You get serious. And then it's like, well, you know, maybe this is, could have been blah, 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 like whatever. Um, yeah. And so there's video, it's like, it, there's so many options. You just have to think about like, again, what's the value of my customer seeing it and hearing it together. And if there's, if there's nothing to see, maybe a video is not the right answer, but if you, you, you want to convey emotion, you want to convey uh, kind of a, a dense amount of information quickly, video really can do a lot. And again, that scene oftentimes, as we say, is believing, uh, especially with products or services, things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I like being a writer. It's it's been hard for me to transition over to to doing videos, and and because uh, and it's easier, just easier, easier for me just to write mm -hmm. it up and you know quick email. But people don't con consume information the same way. A lot of people want to hear, they want to see, they're visual learners, or they want to do while they're they're being uh, so they can like work alongside with with uh, what you're doing. So demonstrations is a great idea uh, to help them with that, especially if they're trying to to accomplish. I teach people how to uh, create lead magnets and landing pages and uh, email um, marketing campaigns and things like that. So there's a lot of hands on that. Um, and I do a lot of that live, but I record it so so they can come back to it. So, yeah, that's Absolutely. great. That That's repurposing great. is another great one, right? Like I did this thing it was, it was live. Now I've got a video of it. I can take it and uh, I can cut it up. I can share it in other ways. I can put multiple pieces together to form something new. Right. And so I'm glad you mentioned that because that's one of the things I wanted to ask you about. What, what are some ways that uh, we can repurpose those videos that we've, you know, maybe we've got a long form video that we've, we've done a training uh, with a group of clients, or maybe, maybe it's some, some um, teaching that we've done. And we want to, we want to pick pieces of that out and, and reuse it. You know, a lot of people don't think of that, but what are some ways that we can repurpose that content and, and use it in our other channels, marketing channels, like on social and email and, and that kind of thing? 
Yeah, I mean, some of it depends on on what was recorded, right? Because oftentimes mm-hmm. you want to be careful here, and um, that if you recorded something and it's more interactive, it might not translate back into a kind of to be split up. But there's always great things in there, and so be thinking about like what again. Think about your audience. What do they need? So if you just offered a training course, for instance, that you recorded and, and the client that you did it for is okay with you repurposing it, you probably built that into your, your contract. Um, think about like, what were highlights? What were things either like aha moments for people or things that, you know, maybe you got some secret sauce, you don't want to go away, but what are the things that kind of lead people to being like, oh, oh, I want a little bit more. I want to know more. And that, you know, if your goal is to sell more of those training classes, right? And so, you know, I I often go through those types of things looking for like, what were the profound things that were said or that meaningful that fit into my content model? Um, so, you know, uh, I've been thinking about this a lot that like, uh, and a great, great gentleman, his name is Owen, Owen Hemseth. He goes by Owen Video Talked About on, on my show. He said, you know, your content model is kind of like a table. And the tabletop is this thing where that's your kind of your core focus. So if you're uh, someone, a a walking coach who helps people lose weight by walking, that's your core thing. And each of the legs is kind of like a silo. So maybe one of those is like all about different types of stretches. Maybe another table leg is all about, uh, you know, like gear or shoes or something like that. And then, you you know, you figure out like nutrition and your your fourth one is whatever it makes sense to be. And so in that repurposing you start to say where does this fit in my content distribution model where where would it make sense to have this this conversation about this piece of content you know and any of the social channels are are good for video it's not like there's one i would completely avoid video on your email yeah you can link to uh video clips or you know maybe it's a little bit longer because you're going to put it on youtube Right. Um, you know, even in on your uh, like your sales page, if that's if you're selling the training, there's maybe some highlight reel clips, right? Like this that give people a sense of what are they going to get. And in particular, in those cases, that's where you're focusing less on the message and maybe more on the reaction. You know, and like, oh, mm-hmm. you, when people are coming to that, like, oh my gosh, I never under oh, I never understood that before. This makes so much sense. Like, if you can get those types of things and it's the natural real experience. Um, that's really powerful, right? Because then people are like, mm-hmm. oh, if they had that experience, I probably will have that experience too. Right. Excellent. I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, what about seeding the video content so that you can get visitors or viewers to take some sort of action in other words conversions how do you how do you build that into your plan i know we we had talked about when we talk you know people being afraid to talk i i always uh, try to use at least bullet points or a script or something uh, because i want to make some key points especially when i'm winding down uh at at the end uh, or maybe even along the way i'm going to talk about my uh, my coaching program or uh, my, this new software launch I've got coming out. What are some ways that, that we can I- improve those uh, conversion rates? Yeah, again, I think it comes around a lot to knowing your audience and where are they at in their journey. Are they what? What are the, what's the next step for them? Right, if they're watching this video that you've created, are they what's the call to action that makes the most sense? It may be purchase. That's a very common one, right? But it might not be that. You might be still nurturing them. And so they need something that is going to be much more like, you know, download this resource, you know, keep Mm -hmm. learning. Um, But you have to plan that. So, you know, I've gone kind of lots of different directions with like the idea of like, I always used to be like, we have to have a script. Now for a lot of things I've talked, I talk about nowadays, it's like, I don't necessarily need a script, but I, I kind of need an outline to give me like the structure, make sure I hit the key salient points. Yeah. But in that you have to be thinking about what, what is that next action that they need to take? And then you need to build for that because what you don't want to do is just ad hoc, like, oh yeah, maybe you should download this thing. Like it, that doesn't work. We, you know, when we look at our videos, what we want to do is see like, what's the right time and place to make the ask. You see this with YouTube videos all the time. And their ask is usually like, hey, we'd love to have you like and subscribe on our channel kind of thing, right? And it usually comes towards the end. But a lot of people know that nowadays that people aren't going to get the end of your video. So maybe that's not where the call to action goes. Maybe it's actually like 30 seconds in 
if that's the thing you, you want someone to do. Um, so you just have to be thoughtful about it. You have to experiment because your audience, what they need, what they want, what they'll respond to, um, or those coming into your funnel, what they'll respond to might be very different than what responds for me. And so this is where kind of the backside of video is that you need a way to look at the analytics and understand what are people who are watching this doing? Um, you know, and a lot of us probably will be on YouTube because it's free and it's very accessible, right? And they've got great analytics. But now the next challenge is, is that YouTube, they don't like it when you send people away from YouTube. <laughs> they want people to stay there. And so right. the algorithm gets a little grumpy at that. But maybe that's okay because you're still, if you're driving them to your, you know, your 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 store or to another page that they're going to get valuable information, that could be fine. Um, but you have to just be really thoughtful about it. So I don't have a great answer, like always do this or always do that. But I will say is always have a call to action. Always give yeah. someone the next step. And that next step can be a variety of things. It could be, you know, watch another video, read the white paper, download my free trial, uh, you know, go purchase whatever makes sense for the content mm -hmm. that you're providing. But like, but you got to think logically through that. If you're at, at the point where it's like a hype video, let me get you really excited about what this product can do. That might be a different story than if it's like, I have like, we're just introducing this concept to you. You know, I, we're going to introduce a tool that is going to allow you to do X, Y, and Z. And you're like, do I need X, Y, do I, do I need to do X, Y, and Z? Very different next steps. So just be really yeah. thoughtful and thinking about who's watching this, what's going to make their lives easier, what's going to help them and then help them make it easy for them to make that decision to want to go to the next thing. Cause if to it's like, Oh, thing. go, go watch this next video and you never point them to the next video, they're not going to watch it. Right. And I think we've we've kind of revisited the same the same uh, concept. You've got to have a plan in in advance. You've got to think it through. You And, and what's next is a is a great suggestion. Uh, having a call to action, knowing what you want them to do. So you've got to know your audience. You've got to know what's going to resonate with them and uh, where you want them to go. So uh, that makes and that makes a total add sense. to that, Paul, always be testing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. The analytics you were talking about. Yeah. Because because the thing is that, I, and we've seen this. We've done something like we've done two videos that are similar, different product, different outcomes. And so, like, you you have to test it, and you know, styles change. Things that people respond to will change over time. And so, just keep an eye on. You got to keep an eye on it. Maybe you try you change titles, and you're like, okay, or maybe you change thumbnails. It could be a myriad of things that you're you're testing or doing to get better. Um, but ultimately, you're, it's never done because the marketplace for video consumption is changing or, or you know, the audience is always kind of evolving and so should our content. Right. And a couple, a question about analytics. So what, what are some of the most important things that you should, you should, uh, I know there's lots of things that you can do, but let's talk about a YouTube video. What are the analytics that you should, that you should be measuring? Yeah, again, it kind of depends on your overall outcome that you're desiring, but watch time is a really good one um, to look at. Like, are they watching the video or are they all, are most, most people will drop off in the first five seconds. Yeah. Most videos I've seen just, it, you know, you get this really sharp decline, but then what happens for the rest of the video? Are, are you still losing them really rapidly or do people come around and are they staying around? Or are they rewatching parts? Uh, quick story. This was, this is a number of years ago, but we made a video and it was a marketing style video to, to introduce the green screen removal feature. So you could remove the green screen from your background. Yeah. And we were very excited about it. We did a, a commercial that we we're going to put on YouTube and in other places based on the television show 24. So it was like this mini 50 second action thriller about this guy who's, you know, this person is given a presentation, but he needs a file. And we basically show how easy it is to remove the background. I loved it. We even had this case that like we opened up the case and it was full of dry ice and the, you know, the, the kind of steam, dry ice, smoke, right? We were so proud of this thing. We started looking at the analytics and what we noticed is that about 37 seconds in, there was this drop off. Like, What's going on at 37 seconds? So we went and looked at the video. It turns out that in the scene, the person delivers this SD card basically. And, and the person giving the presentation is successful. And we have an audience of people clapping. Yay. Well, what does applause mean at the end of Paul? We're done. We're done. 
people stopped watching because they thought it was done. Do you know what happened at about 43 to 45 seconds? Our logo back. and call to action. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. So like <laughs> people were getting 30s. They were watching a, a lot of people watched it 37 seconds in and then they quit at that pivotal moment where if they would have gone another 10 <laughs> seconds, only 10 seconds more, they would have gotten made with Camtasia, blah, 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 blah. Right. Um, and so you, you want to watch that watch time. You want to, you know, look for kind of the anomalies and engagement are, are things happening. A lot of people look, just look at views. It's not a, it's not a super important metric because your audience size really can determine like, you know, if you've got a million subscribers, yeah. your views are going to be higher than if you've got 10 subscribers, um, right. but it's a good one to see like, Hey, are we, changing over time are we stagnant what's happening um you know without pulling up uh youtube there's probably a few others i'm not thinking of over over the mic kind of right the second but those are some of the basics i think if you just go in there you start to look around you'll start to see like hey which of these are really telling me the story about what my viewers are doing and seeing, um, you know, are they leaving right away? Are they sticking around? Are they going to another video? Um, and YouTube, there's lots of tutorials out there that would teach about, about using uh, YouTube analytics for sure. But engagement overall is, is one that we look at all the time. Right. Okay. So one more question. Yeah. Actually, there's, there's two more questions. Uh, I'll leave I'll leave this one for the last. Um, so what what can I do to help my video stand out? Uh, there's so many videos out there like there. I don't know how many billions of hours are uploaded every day uh, or something crazy like that. Uh, and so, you know, small audience, you want to make a dent. So what do you do? Yeah, I'm so I think first and foremost is you know your audience and their needs and focus on that. Right. You know, there's a temptation to look at like YouTube and say like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to, it's going to be on YouTube. YouTube's a great platform, but it doesn't have to, you don't have to have millions of subscribers on YouTube. So think about right. your audience, what they need and make that video because that will then help that audience be successful and that will drive more and more success. So keep thinking about that, right. especially from a marketing standpoint, like, hey, what can I do to help my audience, the people that I want to talk to? And it doesn't have to be all about what you do. It could be about things that are related to what you do. So if you are, um, you know, let's say you're a doctor and maybe you're teaching people skills on how to, to be more flexible. Cool. Then then teach, uh, maybe you got a video about like some basic things to help you maintain flexibility over time or whatever. So think about the things that are going to help, help and then think about the kind of related content and make, make that first. Um, that will help you stand up. Then just have basic quality, like use good, um, you know, get a good microphone if you want to up your game to, to lighting. But Really content is what stands out to people. I think make it, give it, give them content that they want to watch. That's, you know, I watch a lot of video and not because it's good video. It's because I want an answer. I watch video because I want to know something I'm trying to right. learn or understand something. So that, that would be my, that's the way to stand out is just make really good informative content. And then as you go work on getting better, you know, make your first bad video, get it done with, put it out there, make your second <laughs> one. Uh, you know, there's a book, maybe you're familiar with uh, Atomic Habits. James Clear yep. is the author. Love that. Yeah, it's a great book. And the, But that that principle he talks about getting 1% better is the same yeah. as it is for everything else. And it's same for video, right? Just get a little bit better every time you make a video. And uh, I've seen this with many others. I've seen it with myself that the incremental grains, it's like, yep, I'm getting a little bit better, a little bit better. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, the more I do this, I'm actually, and I work actively working on improving it's getting a lot better faster than it would be if I just, you know, Oh, I guess I'm not going to work on it for a while. I'll just, you know, yeah, but you got to keep doing it. Right. And so these concepts, just for our listeners, these are the same concepts, knowing your audience, knowing what they want, what their problems are, what their desires are, what the results, their outcomes they want. Those things can inform you about the kinds of videos that you make. Uh, it's no different than a lead magnet or a blog post or uh, an ebook or or whatever a course whatever it is you got to start with the audience and and what what is it that, that not what you want them to low it's what they want to uh, what problem they want to solve and and what they want what transformation they want to have and so you need to bring them closer to that 
and and it may your your video your one video may not do that but many videos uh certainly will so so paul one thing that you said that i think is really key here because you're already teaching people these things right like you know about blogs and if you have things that are already successful let's say you have a blog post that is really successful and you're feeling really good about it make mm-hmm. a video that fits in that blog post. Not only is right. that good for SEO, like in rankings and things like that, but also, you know, you've got content that's good. So why not give that to them in another format? You know, we know people right. like different formats, but also that it expands all of a sudden the kind of where you can put it because that video can, you know, you can, again, repurpose parts of it or all of it to, for social media. You can put it on YouTube. Like you can start bringing a bunch of things together and it's content that you don't have have to make up new ideas it's right those same ideas just repurposed right and you can take the audio and you can slice up that audio and that audio can be an can be an audiogram that you can share on social media just a little clip of that or you can make a youtube short or or whatever so um i was going to ask you um i was watching your podcast on your um your report on the future of video and you were talking about and one of the things that always comes up in these interviews and everyday conversation is how does AI fit into uh, the future of video and are you using it now and and what do you see uh, how can how can we take advantage of that and not look stupid not not look like everyone else because that's really easy to do it's we can we can we can look dumb really fast now you know so how can we take advantage of that and what what do you see uh, that's coming on the horizon? You know, it's interesting that the history of AI and video is just starting to be written, yeah. right? Like, I think we are still very early days. Um, I think if you were looking to get into using AI, and I I, I, I dabble, um, I think th- think less about like the what's going to be shown, although we're getting there. That's coming, right? But I think about what can it help me do faster, so, for instance, you met, you've mentioned uh, the product Audiate, which is created by TechSmith, right? And it's it it's a basically it automatically transcribes the video or audio, and right. then you can edit it, right? And so that that transcription is using uh, what we'd call machine learning, but it's kind of it's basically an AI yeah, to help do AI. that, right? And there's other things that are going on in there. So, like that's a very simple example. It's you know at this point that's probably baseline but it's it means that you can really speed up that process of editing because then when you cut those things out you can sync it back into the camtasia video editor and then it's you know you've got your video edited so at, at the base level that's really a straightforward one i'm also starting to see tools that beyond that they are starting to look at your content and making recommendations for what are the the right clips so Played with a couple of them. Oh. You basically upload a clip, you know, of a certain size, and it will then kind of transcreate. Um, like if it's let's say it's a normal kind of horizontal sixteen by nine video, it will create multiple versions of a of a, a, a you know vertical video. It will yeah. create a, multiple ver- versions of a square video. It will automatically lay on the transcript you know, and colors and, you know, patterns and things like that. So it's, it's starting to see that like you, we uh, are feeding things into the machine and the machine is spitting out recommended cut and already edited videos. Now I think Mm -hmm. there's work there that's going to happen. It's going to change dynamically because some of them it's still dumb enough. It doesn't know what's important to you, right? It's, it's looking for highlights and it's making based on the AI, some assumptions like this is important. That's important. Um, but it's really interesting to see, like, you could go from a full video to multiple assets that you could distribute across multiple channels relatively quickly. Yeah. Um, you know, for our podcast, which is also a video, uh, I've been feeding the podcast into now it's uh, the audio side into a, a tool. And it again, it transcribes it, um, but then it spits out titles, descriptions keywords um you know if i wanted it an introduction it will give me uh t- things to tweet things to post on linkedin things to put in threads which you know they just added that really quickly i you can give it an insert prompts and so it will give me an outline uh, i've got it right now running prompts so it to like turn this into a three module course uh just to yeah. see like not that i'm doing that not that i'm using it but just to see what it would do like does it give yeah. me ideas like of how we could reuse this content um you know and we're also we're still at that point where it's like yeah it's 
getting me, it's getting me on the page. Um, but mm-hmm. it's not always ready for quite ready for prime time. And so, you know, just be mindful that anything at this point, we're still, you still got to review for accuracy. You still got to review all that, you know, the kind of common disclaimers around AI, but it's pretty incredible how fast we're moving. You know, yeah. it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm of an age where I, I remember a lot of the tech, you know, I came up, you know, most of my schoolmates did not have computers. I happened to have a mom who was into computer uh, programming back in the late seventies, early eighties. And so mm-hmm. I've grown up with technology. Um, but you know, some of my peers that de- didn't de- definitely didn't, but I've seen kind of the evolution and by far, this has been like one of the fastest uptakes of anything kind of new. So I yeah. think we're in, we're incredibly early though. And with that comes the fact that if you're excited by it now, it's only going to get better. If you're terrified by it now, it's probably going to get worse for you because <laughs> yeah. it's, and I don't think we need to be terrified. I think what we need to do is embrace what it does well and how does it augment what we can do so we can do the things that we're good at and really focus on the things that matter. Because if if it writes a paragraph or I write a par- paragraph, I don't know if I care about that, but what I care about is connecting with my audience, connecting with my guest making sure that we're talking about things that are relevant and valuable for the company. Right. And every, and I've been doing an AI series uh, and I've had a number of uh, guests on the show and every single one of them. And, and I, of course, I've, I've chosen that my guests and the, because that's their message, their core message is they're interested in humanizing it. They're interested in that connection and they're interested in using it as a tool for what it is. But, but that human connection, that, uh, being real and being transparent and being there and making that connection, that's AI is not going to replace that. And so you've got to use it uh, responsibly, which uh, not everybody's doing these days, but uh, that's okay. We know that, that that's that's super important is to connect with our audiences and use those tools. So um, as we wrap up, Matt, with your final words, what are three things that our uh, listeners can do today to put these ideas into action? I love it. The three things that you can do today. Number one, make a video. If you're already making videos, make your next video and try to get it a little bit better. But if you've not started using video, just go out and make one. Just go through the process. There's so much you'll learn in that 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 opportunity that it really will move you forward because it's getting over the fear. Two, right. at a base level, everyone should invest minimally in at least a microphone. If you have a microphone, great. If it's good enough, you're done. But if you don't, find one that works well for you and and put it to work. So don't let your your video suffer from poor quality audio. And number three, take a little bit of time to learn the skills that are required for video. We don't, I don't ever expect someone becomes an expert in video, especially when they're experts in something else. You don't want to be an expert in video. You want to be an expert in marketing or you want to be an expert in sales or expert in whatever your craft or your field is. But like anything, you need to spend a little bit of time just learning some of the basics. Now, uh, Paul, you'll talk about this, but we have a, a free resource that we we don't even talk about our products. We talk about things like writing scripts, creating storyboards, you know, setting up a, a lighting, it's getting audio in, in your environment, a variety of other things, because we know that this is a challenge. And there's lots of places you can turn to learn that. But um, we're, we're trying to make it easy and simple for everybody. But that's it's really an important thing. Just learn a bit. You don't have to learn how to be a Hollywood director or be a, a Steven Spielberg or anything like that. But that little bit of knowledge will empower you to feel very confident in making videos that are impactful and effective at connecting with your audience and helping them to be successful. Amen, brother. And you can go to uh, TechSmith Academy, by the way, the free gift that he's offering uh, is you can go to www.leadmachinegrowthshow.com forward slash TechSmith Academy. That's T-E-C-H-S-M-I-T-H-A-C-A-D-E-M-Y. I didn't think I could do that. <laughs> so uh, check that out. And there's also, he mentioned a study um a video viewer study, which uh, we talked about, uh, you know, that number one, that trend people people leave and they trail off if, if you got bad bad audio you, they're going to trail off you can access that study at www.leadmachinegrowthshow.com forward slash video view study and uh, thank you so much matt for being on the show today really appreciate it 
And for our listeners, remember, faith and action go hand in hand. So put the pedal to the metal. And until next time on the Lead Machine Growth Show, I'm Paul Guyon. So long for now. Thank you for tuning in to the Lead Machine Growth Show with Paul Guyon, where we show you how to tackle your tech, master your message, and design your dream so that you can transform your vision into reality. Remember to visit our website, at www.leadmachinegrowthshow.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Lead Machine Growth Show.